today we're talking about keeping your band together, working with legendary record producers, and how to treat your fans. And of course we're going to do some cooking. My name is Mark Watson and welcome to Cooking Backstage where we cook with a special guest from the music industry. Our guest today is Dave Rave. He's a member of the Canadian punk rock band Teenage Head who hail from Hamilton, Ontario. Now Dave fully admits he is not a cook, but that's what made this episode so much fun. Together we made some homemade burgers, which from this point forward we're calling McRavers. Please watch to the end, I'm sure you always do, to see just how appreciative Dave is of learning how to cook a meal. He's a great guy, full of passion, a love for music, and just a joy to be around. Now I messed up. I broke the number one rule of audio recording. You gotta turn the mic on. So the first bit of the segment I had to scrap. We were in the kitchen making the patties, but with no audio. Luckily I caught my stupidity before we moved outside to the grill and we recovered most of our conversation outside. So the first quick little bit is just going to be making the patties and then we'll move outside and start cooking with Dave Rave. A big thank you to our sponsor High Performance Management Solutions. Please subscribe, smash that like button, hit the bell button. Thank you. So you want to start with equal parts ground beef and ground pork. Okay, and then for your spices, you're going to do a tablespoon onion powder, tablespoon of garlic powder, tablespoon of black pepper, just a teaspoon of salt. Okay, meat goes in. Okay, and once you have that nice and evenly mixed, just take half your spices and put it on the top and mix that in. Put the other half on the other side. And that just makes sure you get it evenly distributed. Okay, once you have those spices mixed in, now you're going uh, you're going to portion out the meat. 2 pounds of meat here. So if we divide that up by 8, we're going to have 8 quarter pounders. Just a nice ball that fits in the palm of your hands. And there you have it, your 8 quarter pounders. I like my burgers uh, nice and uniform, so I uh, use a burger press. <laughs> And there you go, you got eight beautiful patties all set to go. All right, here we are in Cooking Backstage with Dave Ray. We're making some McRavers. And uh, let's do this, all right? I'm ready. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's cook. So we we've got, got uh, we might as well have a side of french fries. Why not? Yeah. Mushrooms, some fresh tomatoes, some fresh jalapeno. Wow. Some onions. Woo. I got some fresh bread. And, uh, and of course, we got our McRavers. Right beautiful, there. look at them. Yes. Handmade. Yep, baby. By this guy right here. So we, what are we going to do now? So we're going to start with, man, is uh, let's get those Oil. french fries on first. Put, the, uh, put them on first? Yep. Okay. There we go. Oh, look yeah. at that, eh? Already. Oh. Mark fries? <laughs> <laughs> McRavers and Mark fries. I love it. I, I like it. it. So you got hey, one of the best, best names in rock and roll. Dave Rave. How yeah. did you get that name? Well, that happened during uh, my very first record I got to perform on with Teenage Head in 77. We were rehearsing at a, a, a record store in downtown Hamilton called Star Records. Uh, a, a fellow friend of ours, Mike Mope, came in and looked over and saw me on guitar and went, Loco's on rhythm guitar, Dave effing rave. And <laughs> The effing went, but the rave stayed. <laughs> so when they when they made the first single, they put me down rhythm guitar, Dave Rave, and it just be stuck. You know, I think a, a nickname is um, only can be a nickname if it if it uh, if it's sort of not true. And I am a raver, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, How did you start? Like, were you did you take lessons? Did you yourself? Yeah. Pop? Well, I, I it was a bit of both. You know, like I just suddenly um, taking a few lessons and then learning on my own. And I think that's the pattern I've kept my whole life. Like I'll get a book I want to go, how does this work? Read a little bit and then put it to my own madness, you know? And you've been a pro for how long? How many years? Well, that? I really, I consider it 70, 1978 because that's when I actually started playing sort of full time. And you know, 77, between 73, you say in 77 I was playing, but it was from school into playing the coffee houses and then eventually into playing in bands and then making records. So, and that was, I think with Teenage Head, 77, 78, that's when I made my first professional event. And then the Shakers, we made a professional rock album too. So Teenage Head and the Shakers, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Now I know you you did uh, some work with uh, Daniel Lanois. Yeah. In fact, you were one of his go-to guys for rhythm guitar. Right? Yeah. Well, um, Danny was in in Hamilton at the time at Grand Avenue with, with his brother Bob and with Ed Roth, and they had a great place. But to finally go there, and I was af offered to be on a session to help out. They called Guy Bocal, and I got to know Dan there. It was a great life, great relationship, and then eventually through the Shakers, Teenage Head, and all that. Dan and I created a bond that continued, you know. Now the other thing I, uh, I didn't realize is you've done some work with Jack Richardson, who was uh, my professor in college. Yeah, oh, the best. Well, he he really was the professor. Um, when the Shakers had that opportunity to work with him, it was incredible. It was like going to school. It really was. Um, he he taught us about song editing, like, um, and how to do it in a level that I'd never done. It was like working with our version of George Martin, the Beatles producer, or one of those guys, because he just sat in a stool. You had to play the song to him, and he would go, nope, that part, you don't need that part, edit that part out, or take that part and put it here. And it was just spectacular. And plus, he, as you know, he has a great, he had a great sense of humor. Yeah. Very funny, and he had amazing stories, and it was a privilege. I got the, the privilege of working with Danny, Daniel Lenoir, and Jack Richardson at the beginning of my career. You, you couldn't go wrong, and it's continuing now because I just did a project with the Second Offenders, <laughs> I call it, the, they raven the, the Second Offenders with Mark Howard. He, he, he uh, uh, mixed it for us, and he's part of Daniel and Law crew, so the conti it continues on, you know. Pre-COVID, you were you're back and forth from New York. You spent a lot of time in New York. Yep, absolutely. Thirty years. Wow, <laughs> a long time. Yeah. So what do you what have you been doing during COVID? I got a request from the Cotton Factory to go work there, and I recorded an album with Mark Foley, uh, Claude DeRoche and Shakers, and uh, and uh, Jack Sipric of the Trues. Because uh, they were all around three, so on our spare time, recorded an album during this uh, COVID time. All right, so let's flip those babies. Flip them. Look at those burgers, man. Yeah. The McRavers are looking good, eh? They are. Yeah. Well, you haven't oh. tried. You haven't tried them yet, though. Yeah. Anyway, that phone call was from Jack from the Trues, Jack Sipper, and he said to say hello, everybody out there in in TV land. Yeah, you've worked uh, worked quite a bit with the Trues, haven't you? Yeah, like well, you know, it was similar to Haley Rose. I when it was told about them by their their father Vic Sipric, who when we would play in in Halifax, he ran the club that we were that we always played in, and, and Vic is an amazing guy. So uh, he they were just young lads, and so I sort of felt like I'd grown up with them because he'd be showing me pictures. And then finally he said they're coming to, to live in the Toronto St. Catharines area, Niagara area. So I hope you guys connect. And a, a fellow named Mark Rogers from the LMT Connection brought me right to their home. And it was just like seeing family because I'd been seeing so many pictures. Uh, it was before they were even called the Trues. They were called Trouser then. And we just connected right away. It was just an easy connection. And they were such a great band and a great bunch of guys. And they, uh, they just are one of the great Canadian rock bands as far as I'm concerned. Cooking is fun, man. I like, I like him being this side of the coin. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you can, yeah, you can just put that aside or over here. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, grab your cheese, man. And we'll oh, we put a little cheese in. Are we getting close to the finish line? We're getting close to the finish line. Okay, the dog doesn't like cheese, do we? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And then uh, let's put your mushrooms right on there. Right on the deal, baby. Yeah. What's your advice for someone coming into this industry? Well, I just say is be flexible, learn, and as you grow. The more you know, the better it is. The more you know what you want to do, because the more specific you can get in getting to where you got to go, that's great. We were really specific at one point. We just knew the kind of music we wanted to play and how we were going to do it. But you know, and just, and just don't take it seriously. There's times when you have to let it go. You have to go, hey, you know what? That a and guy didn't like me, or that person took, told me. You need to learn how to take rejection. And, but hey, you know what? Around the corner, let's have fun. Or you go that night, you travel six hours and nobody's in the bar <laughs> you're supposed to play or nobody nobody went to the concert that you thought was going to be a big one yeah so yeah i just got to be flexible enjoy the ride i've done everything from manage <coughs> like help manage a career like i've helped do stuff like say with Haley rose the uh that beautiful singer from uh from burlington here well, i guess you call it mentor for lack of a better word uh, but really help her manage her to get to her own place where she's now she can do it herself 
And so that's a role you got to take your side person to and let your ego go and let her shine. And I, in Teenage Head, I was a side man and the front man, <laughs> you know. I played guitar when Frankie was singing, but I also been the singer, you know. Um, and I've done that I, with John Wesley Harding, the, the, the folk singer from England who lives in America. I was driver and side person with him, you know. Um, you have to take different roles. It's, and I even one time I think when Teenage Head, the company we were on, they were firing everybody in the company. Uh, they were going bankrupt. I, I pretended I was the press agent. So I'd go in the morning and have to call everybody up and say, hey, you know, pretend I wasn't me. But I'm going to call myself Doug or some of that. But you're right, we all have to play many roles. It's, people don't realize that in show business. It's, it's, it's a, you have to be flexible. There's a great book by James Taylor's brother. He talks about, he goes, when somebody chooses to come and see you play, you got to remember that person, you're the last thing on the list for them. They, they have to go and, uh, you know, drive a car, buy, buy the tickets, maybe even find a hotel if it's a little bit of distance, get some friends, where are they going to go for dinner, all in the relationship of going to see you. So you got to thank them and say, thank you for choosing me. You didn't choose a hockey game last night or you didn't you know, choose us to go to a steakhouse or whatever. You chose to come and see us play and spend your money, you know, because it, it's not just the ticket, but all the stuff that goes along with it. And that's something that it really was a great little piece of advice from me from his book to put it in perspective of what's really going on. Yeah. This is sort of like making a record mark, right? Isn't it like you you you, you hit the base the vent tracks? That's right. Yeah, this is sort of like the mixing part, eh? Yeah, we did the pre-production. Yeah. The pre preparing. So we did the now vent tracks. Yeah. Now we're getting to the final mix or the final. We've been mastering now the record. Yeah. I love the onions. This is tough. All right, so we get our jalapenos on there, our mushrooms, tomatoes. Look at this, Mark. There we go. And we got our As two go. McRavers there, I've right? never been prouder in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored. When you're an apartment dweller like me, to do this is like, uh, you know, special. Thank you <laughs> for the experience. Yeah, thanks for doing it, man. Appreciate uh, it. Great. So what's next for Dave Rave? Well... After this cooking, I'm going to become a chef. No. <laughs> of course, I was telling you about that group in Minnesota, the governor. So we're going to have a double, uh, double record out, and I'm very excited. It's called January June, and it'll be on all the, the usual suspects eventually on vinyl and CD too. But right now, digitally, and also, I recorded this album, of course, with uh, Second Responders, with with uh, Jack Sipric and the gang, and then, uh, not last but not least, but Teenage Head is uh, got a documentary about the band called Picture My Face and it's the whole history of the band. So uh, it's it's a really amazing documentary and it's a hard hitting doc. It's not, the gloves are off, We're, you gotta be honest so you really see what the band was about from the beginning to now. I often say one of the hardest things to do is to keep a band together. Yeah, you know as a manager, right? <clears throat> and as a, as a performer yourself, um, yeah, it put the band together. You have to have a sort of iron will. And I was, I've been in and out. It's, it's an interesting story. I've been in and out of Teenage Head. Like, I've been in it, out of it, back in it, and out of it. Now I'm back in it at the right time. It's great to be with the boys again. It's, it's your home, and it's your brothers. You, you remember that? We're just now here. We're still brothers, you know? It, it brings back everything, you know, from us playing baseball when we were kids, you know? Because that's how Teenage Head is worked a neighborhood band. We're not a professional band. We're a neighborhood band and who became professional, <laughs> you know? Now why do you think it is so hard for a band to stay together in your opinion? I think it's because all of us as, as human beings have different visions of what it's supposed to be. So in the beginning you, you have a unified vision and eventually it starts fraying. You know, one guy goes, hey, you know, I really want to play trumpet music. Oh, I want to just keep it the way it was. Another guy says, you know, hey, you know, like why don't we do all of it? And, so you, everybody just sort of gets into uh, uh, a little bit of a, 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 you know, different different visions. But the guys that stay together respect everybody's visions and says, but hey, we're still stronger as a team together. And I would say that would be with every band, from Tragically Hip to The Trues Now, to Teenage Head, to all the young bands coming up now. It's, 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 um, it's a unified vision made of separate people. But it's so, as a result, it can be, that can be trouble. <laughs> From a rock and roller 
who's lived on New York pizza for 30 years. <laughs> the greatest slices. This is a masterpiece for me, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud. It's like, you know, my first gold record. <laughs> Thank you.